What's up? I'm waking up right now. I'm in a hotel room. Yeah, this is look at the Automate Grow Cell live experience. Um, it's uh, Joshua Latimer and Brandon Vaughn's live event. There's um, there's like 60 people or more here. This has been going on for a couple weeks right now. There was one session that already ended and left, and now this is session two. My wife and I, uh, we drove up here. Hi, honey. Hello. Yes, look back and say hello. Hello. We're on our way to the GIE Expo in Louisville, Kentucky, so we stopped through here, and we're here for a couple days now. And um, I'm just eating oatmeal. But the cool thing is... <laughs> I literally wasn't here more than two hours and already just by being around uh, people of such a high standard and caliber um, how it rubs off on you getting around successful people and people who are a players and people who are winning and trying to win and focusing on having the best life possible and i'm not just talking about business and money i'm talking about a wholesome life i mean just being around people like that the energy rubs off on you and for instance i was talking to brandon vaughn last night for just 10, ten minutes and um, he's a coach, right? He has this whole thing, this whole coaching program called the Conquer Program. It's like 700 bucks a month, and they will coach you in your business, and it's awesome. And it might seem a little pricey, but it's actually not compared to... But anyways, okay. I tell him this thing. He's standing there. We're, we're, he's looking in my eyes, and I tell him, you know what's crazy, Brandon? I learned this thing about myself. I learned that I'm very smart creatively and emotionally. And when I do something in repetition, in hindsight, I can get really good at something and master it. But moving forward, my spatial intelligence IQ quotient is low. That's learning and adapting new things in the real world and implementing new things into my life, into my business. It's almost like I'm like not very smart at that. And I said, how do you how do you work on that so you can pick up the speed of implementation and move the ball faster and start growing and expanding? How do you expand your spatial IQ? And he looks at me, he goes, you build a team around you. You just stay in your lane and do what you're good at and stop trying to do everything and stop trying to do stuff you're not good at or you shouldn't be doing put lanes up or rails up on yourself or he said put a stay in your lane and then you are the visionary and you build a team and you get them excited and they do all of that stuff right uh, the next thing that comes up for me is that of profit margin Okay, so you can't build a team around you that's anybody that's going to stick around or somebody that's of a high a capacity, a caliber enough where they're going to want to learn. Without profit margin, you know, we've got to pay people. So either one or two things is going to happen. This is good oatmeal. Uh, you're going to raise your prices and press the reset button on your business and lose a lot of clients or keep some and realize, oh my God, you could have created packages and upsells and you know raised the man hour rate way, way, way higher than you ever thought possible because now you have a reason why. Uh, and you're going to have to redevelop all the pricing on your business and build infrastructure so you can start bringing people in and then you can afford to pay them. Or two, you can take a risk and um, bring in a high caliber person and then they're going to generate the revenue. But 
even if they do generate revenue, let's say they're a very efficient worker, they're good on your team, it could be anything from a laborer to a foreman to a project manager to somebody in-house who does marketing. But still on top of that, if you're not bringing in enough revenue per hour profit margin, because it doesn't matter if you make a hundred grand in a month. If you're if you're if you're if you have a hundred grand a month in overhead, it's like not really even that impressive. That's actually terrifying. My friend uh, Eric has a roofing business, and although we're very close and he shares everything with me, I can't tell you it's confidential. But we'll just say he's a good example that. He's a specialist. He only does like high-end roofs. He does a lot of insurance work. And he does the best of the best of the best. And that's the type of client he attracts. And also, his profit margin is is very well to the point where um, he can make decisions quickly and get them rolling in even more revenue So, think about this. If you had a couple million bucks in the bank, you could literally just be like, hmm, let's expand the office. You pull the trigger, office expanded with some new desks. Hmm, I need an in-house marketer. Come on. Come on, doggy. So you like bring somebody, you hire someone who's good at marketing and they manage the marketing in your business and social media. Although that you should oversee the marketing in your business, they're doing the implementation, like, you know, getting the door hangers and the things uh, ordered and, and, and the shirts and the designs and doing all that stuff. And, hmm, I need a new, I need a good foreman. Let's launch this next group. Well, we're going to need a van. We're going to need a truck and a van. Just go to the dealership. Pew! You would just buy it. Well, it needs a $3,500 vinyl wrap. Hmm. You call up your like uh, your, your in-house marketing person and you just pull the trigger. And then they make the call. And then you have somebody drop the van off for you. And then you pick it up in a few days and the whole thing's vinyl wrapped. And then, well, we need an in-house training system. So, like, what I mean is uh, when you got profit margin and money, you can make decisions without the fear of being in survival mode. Survival mode becomes an addictive habit that you can have 50 grand in the bank and you are still running around like you're broke in survival mode. It becomes a habit, an addiction you become addicted to the struggle. And I've seen this happen in my own business, in my own life, uh, doing things, uh, a lot of new things, but still doing things an old way that don't work. Uh, one thing, a mistake that I make is these are the, by the way, uh, I digress. These are the type of videos that when I actually meet somebody who watches my videos at a live event like this they'll be like i remember when you made that video in the hotel room and and i related to what you were saying and i'm like so that's why i make these type of videos because they're weird and they're funny and and it's real um not that i'm anybody special but okay so running to save your employees every time they get out of line um, as far as just the quality in their work, right? Instead of letting them trip on themselves and trip over, over their own feet and learn themselves, you running in to save them um, for me, it's like it's like an, uh, an, an impulsive reaction. Um, 
as I pull up to the job site or I'm sitting in the truck trying to do paperwork and return phone calls or I'm even on the job with them. And, and I'm getting a little bit better at this now, but I, you know, I'd see them start just veering off track because of maybe it was my lack of direction and communication and not giving them a very accurate blueprint up front, right? Because, and I would like, instead of learning how to communicate so um, they know what the client wants done, I would, so I'm getting like insecure right now, I can't even talk about it. Yeah. Just jump out of the truck and just run over and feel like I want to grab the shovel or the axe or the squeegee and start doing it for them. And then how, if you do that, think about if you're the boss and you do that, how is the person who works for you going to feel if you're acting that way? You know, first of all, they're not going to feel like respected. It's just weird. It's not, it's not being an adult. It's not being a leader. What is a leader? That's the next question. So anyways, to wrap this up. God, this apple juice is... Ugh. Isn't that too sweet? It's like pure syrup. I'm not even going to touch it. I know. Yeah. So, uh, we came in... You ever come... You're, on tra you're traveling and you come into town so late at night that everything is closed and you're starving. And then you're literally stuck eating McDonald's. And we never eat McDonald's, and we ended up eating McDonald's last night because there was nothing to eat, and we were so hungry. We were on the road for, like, you know, seven hours. So I was up all night with heartburn, sitting, sleeping up like this, and, like, I found some Pepto-Bismol in the, uh... God, that McDonald's was, like... Well, it was the spiciness. Yeah, I ordered these chicken tenders... And they put these like this like spicy barbecue sauce all over it. So just by being at this event, I'm up in the middle of the night. It's like 3 a.m. and I'm like, oh, and I'm making resolutions for my life. So I'm like, that's it. I'm gonna eat healthy from here on out. I actually love eating healthy, right? But when you're working 70 hours a week in your own service business. After a while, everything just starts sliding downhill because you get burnt out, right? This could be a whole nother video. You get burned out, and now you, you're focused on your diet, on getting proper rest, spending time with yourself to do things that make you happy and peaceful that you love, like even if it's relaxing. All that starts slowly degrading and going down the drain, and you just turn into this drone who's just going to work every day, and it's uh, it's very unhealthy. So, uh, pressing the reset button, getting away, getting to a live event, getting the forty thousand foot view, seeing the forest for the trees, looking at yourself introspectively is so incredibly important. So, just by being here already, not even forty eight hours, um, I'm already thinking like, uh, honey, I love you, and thank you for packing my lunch. We're putting like chips in my lunch and I bought this bag of chips and it was a multi-pack and there's like Cheetos and shit in there. Like they taste good, but they're horrible for you. And then uh crackers and like so now I want I want vegetables, like carrots and broccoli and apples and fruits and vegetables in my lunch and instead of any junk food at yeah, all like, now. The best thing to do would be like a sandwich. Grapes, like yeah, grapes, apple. apples, all healthy food, and then so we're talking about systems. Food can be a system. Another system is uh, the time you go to bed at night. Uh, let's say you have a cutoff time; it's eleven p.m. My mine's actually midnight, but um, I've I've degraded to now. Midnight was my time to where no phone, no nothing. I'm stopping whatever I'm doing, and I'm going straight to bed, and I'm going to sleep. I've been actually staying up to, like, 12.56 a.m., just looking at my phone. You ever go on Craigslist or Facebook, and you're just looking at, like, trucks and equipment, and you're just like, like, it's not even productive at all. You're just, like, feeling this dopamine hit in your drain, in your brain, Stupid, right? So what's a what's a sleep system? 
is. Oh, the GQ, New Yorkie. Times for everything. Uh, date nights. Every Tuesday night, we do a date night. We've been doing this for three years. And I think of different days of the week, you can do specific things. You could be like, okay, if you have a business, um, you'd be like, okay, uh, Mondays, I'm no longer allowed to go out and work in the field at all. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I got to hire somebody or send them out. Monday's office day. Tuesday's marketing day. Wednesday's this day. Or you, you pick certain days where you carve out an hour even to do certain things, and then you stick to that, and it turns into habit. I know Saturday is my finance day. Every single Saturday morning, the first thing I do, and this is one thing that's helped me a lot, is I wake up and I, uh, I pay the bills. I go through the finances. I transfer money around. I move money from checking to savings and specific allotted amounts and percentages. And I've been doing this for four years, ever since I read Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. And now all the finances are completely taken care of and all the bills are always paid. And that's a huge accomplishment in my life because I came from a person with no structure at all in anything, you know. So I think that I know that when you have minimum viable systems and structure in place structure gives you the freedom to flow and now you can be inspired and you can have times where you do whatever you want because you have the backbone of structure to depend on and to rely upon and that's how um, and it takes a little bit of discipline but it's totally worth it that's about it for this video Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll shoot some more videos. Check out my other YouTube channel, The Landscaping Employee Trap. Just type in Keith Kelfus on YouTube. Hit me up on Instagram at Keith Kelfus. Check out my podcast, KeithKelfus.com. Go to the podcast tab. You can listen to anything, including this video, will be turned into a podcast and um, on all the major podcast platforms. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, this channel just hit 10,000 subscribers, which is awesome. And it's been a fun journey and sharing my journey with you guys. Alrighty, see you soon.